What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and Liverpool are interested in signing Frank Cassier, the midfield maestro, the midfield powerhouse from AC Milan who is only 24 years old and he has been one of the best players for AC Milan in the past few years and AC Milan are back in the Champions League. I'm really looking forward to seeing them, what they can do in the Champions League. And he only has 12 months left on his contract and in this video we will report on a lot of things including Liverpool's uh, pre-season game against Mainz. I couldn't watch it live because I was traveling to my girlfriend's uh, parents house but I'm really excited to bring you this video because we will have a lot of transfer news and also Liverpool's transfer plans revealed by Melis Reddy and the independent article so I will talk about that later in this video so if you enjoy these videos leave a like subscribe if you haven't already and Liverpool are eyeing up a move for for AC Milan midfielder Frank Cassier, according to many English and Italian newspapers, they look to pounce on his uh, contract situation because uh, Cassier only has 12 months left on his contract and there has been question marks raised over whether his long-term future remains at uh, AC Milan. Da La Gazzetta dello Sport in Italy claiming that Liverpool are targeting the 24-year-old midfielder. It is believed that a dispute over the wages tabled by AC Milan have seen negotiations uh, reach um, an impasse, uh, which means that uh, basically AC Milan don't want to give Cassier the wages that he demands. Right now, currently, he's earning only 1.9 million pounds per season and they would be AC Milan would be open to raising that figure to 3.4 million so almost double his wages but Cassie's representatives are demanding uh, cl something closer to 5.1 million per per season and AC Milan are not in a very healthy financial situation uh, the pandemic hit uh, Italy very very hard they don't have as great a TV deal as the Premier League has and also AC Milan has have been out of the Champions League for many many seasons now and that hurt their finances uh, as well so they don't have the money to properly pay Frank Cassier the top top wages that he wants to and I think he's a uh almost a world-class midfielder I say almost because I think he needs to go to a Premier League or a La Liga club to go to the next level and but he is still uh, he put in many world-class performances for AC Milan and yes Cassier could sign a contract extension if AC Milan decide to give him the wages that he wants but uh, Liverpool are one of the favorites to sign him if he ends up not signing a new contract because then AC Milan are forced to sell Cassier if he doesn't sign a new contract they have to sell him this summer otherwise they risk losing him on a free transfer you know how this works guys you are smart people so when a player has only one year left on his contract the club has to sell him otherwise we will end up in a situation where Liverpool had to lose Vina Doom one of their starting midfielders to Paris Saint-Germain on a free transfer and Liverpool are thought to be especially interested in uh, in Cassier and showdown talks between Cassier and his club next week may clear up the situation and the mirror is reporting that Liverpool will offer Cassier a deal with a seven million pounds per season in attempt in an attempt to to lure the combative goal scoring midfielder from AC Milan and I have the stats for you guys Cassier is just 24 years old he is 183 centimeters tall and he scored a whopping 14 goals for AC Milan last season that is an absolutely incredible goal scoring number and the Syria is a very very strong league and he still scored 13 goals in just 37 games and he is an absolute machine he is as durable as Vinadum. he almost never gets injured I'm looking at the numbers that he played in the Syria since the 2016-17 season he always played at least 30 games but since he signed for AC Milan and since he played for AC Milan he played 37 games then 34 then 35 and last season he played 37 games so all in all he played almost every single game for AC Milan which is really really encouraging and uh, he scored 14 goals last season which which says uh, says it all I think that he's a brilliant goal scoring midfielder sports media said claim that the battle for Cassius signature will be tough but if AC Milan 
offered him 5 million and Liverpool offered him 7 million. I think it's a no-brainer to join Liverpool. At AC Milan, yes, he might fight for the Serie A title. AC Milan, we just got back into the Champions League. They just qualified for the first time in God knows how many years. He doesn't have a realistic chance of winning major trophies regularly. And he's at the age where he has to think, what does he want to do? Does he want to be a one-club man where he stays at AC Milan for many years and try to revive the club and maybe win a Serie A title, maybe win a Champions League in the next five years? But at Liverpool, he could win a Premier League title every two seasons or every three seasons. He could win the Champions League every two or three seasons. That's how I look at it, that Liverpool will be favourites for those trophies in the next five years. AC Milan clearly will not be favourites for any of those trophies. Maybe the Serie A at one point, but right now AC Milan uh, will just target cementing their top four place. And I think Frank Cassier would honestly be the perfect replacement for Wijnaldum. He uh, has a very similar playing style, very similar skill set, but he scores more goals than Wijnaldum in my opinion, uh, but uh, I think Liverpool would would do very very well to, to get him. I think Liverpool need another midfielder. Uh, Melis already is reporting in the independent that Liverpool cannot rely on Thiago Henderson and Fabinho to play all season, especially because the midfielders that should complement them, Naby Keita and Oxley Chamberlain, they have a terrible injury records for the past two or three years. So Liverpool need one more midfielder and we are waiting for some deals to go through. We are in the process of selling Harry Wilson to Fulham for around 10 to 12 million. Neil Jones is reporting uh, in the gold.com that we are working with Fulham to sell them Harry Wilson for 12 million. That could free up some funds. And Melly Safaredi is also reporting that Liverpool's decision to invest in the current group of players, prioritizing lucrative extensions and bonus structures as wages proved to be the biggest correlation with success in football and that paid the dividends recently. The wage bill rose from like 200 million in five or six, six years ago to 326 million despite a revenue, drastic revenue fall due to Covid. And despite the, this uh, pandemic, uh, the, in the last three years Liverpool's wages grow grew the most out of all the top six clubs in the Premier League. So make sure to think about that Liverpool are investing just not uh, like bringing in players or, but investing in the current squad and keeping our top players and giving them wages that keeps them happy at the club is as important as signing players like Konate or Cassie if we end up managing to sign him. And Liverpool are entering very dangerous territories. Many of our key players have uh, two years on their contract and we need to negotiate uh, new contracts with Alisson, with Van Dijk, with Mohamed Salah, with Jordan Henderson, with Sadio Mane, with Bobby Firmino and uh, and these are the players that are some of them at least entering 30 years old or even past 30 years old in the case of uh, Henderson it's it's far from an ideal scenario and since the summer of 2019 Liverpool have introduced a sense of newness but there will be an understandable sentiment that it hasn't been enough the overriding view is the process will need to be furthered in the current window so that means Liverpool need to sign an attacker and the midfielder. We need another Tio Thiago, uh, uh, sorry, we need another Diogo Jota and another Ibrahim Konate transfer. Those were great uh, signings, but we need more. We need more fresh faces who are young, who are already great players and who have the potential to become world-class. Diogo Jota and Konate definitely has the potential, both have the potential to become world-class. One of Liverpool's biggest issues has been shifting uh, fringe players or players on loan, not just in a monetary sense, but in freeing up non-homegrown squad spaces and assessing how to get the balance right for because of the rules for a 25-man squad. There has been quite a drop in money received for outgoings in the past three seasons um, because in the past three seasons Liverpool received £112 million from player sales. The four years before that, so just one, in one more year, Liverpool got almost four times as much, £412 million for from player sales. And finally Liverpool managed to move on some players, Avoni, Marco Gruic and now Harry Wilson uh, is on the verge of agreeing a transfer to uh, Fulham, but finding a proper 
suitors and selling uh, players for, for big fees like Divo Corrigi and Shakiri and normal world they would command 15-20 million Liverpool will be lucky if we get 12 or, th or 15 million for any of them and all Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain it looks like he's, he's looking like uh, to be getting repurposed as a false nine a false number nine to add to where he can fill in and Naby Keita really need to make significant contributions this season that is uh, starting the pair had a combined 11 stars last season and the majority of them was by Naby Keita. so the key point in the article by Melissa Reddy is that Liverpool are actively looking at buying a midfielder and an attacker because uh, we can't rely on uh, the fringe players like Keita, Oxley, Chamberlain and yes Curtis Jones is impressive but uh, if, uh, if Fabinho and Henderson or Thiago or even two of them get injured do you want to start Curtis Jones regularly and expect him to deliver performances required in a, in a title winning team? I'm not sure we can rely on him uh, because he's still a young player with of course a lot of time ahead of him so refreshing in this area is absolutely vital for Liverpool we need another young midfielder to come in and the problem with uh, of course bringing in another Diogo Jota is uh, that when we signed Salah or when we signed Mane we could slot them in straight away into the starting lineup they didn't have a world-class player ahead of them if we sign another Diogo Jota they will have to sit on the bench and try to compete with Salah and Mane who are both world-class wingers, world-class attackers it might have been a different picture altogether uh, there was the lingering feeling in the past that uh, Salah and Mane could be seduced by Barcelona or Real Madrid but the clubs that used to pay mega money are now investing in the free agent market and Liverpool of course will be patient in securing the right deals remember that we signed the Thiago and Jota 24 hours apart quite late in the transfer window so Liverpool will wait for the right deals to come uh, around for the right opportunities to arise for the right transfer fee and right wages we will sign the right players um, so Liverpool fans need to be very very patient me included I'm really really looking forward to Liverpool announcing a, a brand new big signing but Liverpool who are probably one of the leading uh, analytics uh, teams in the recruitment have made smart decisions in the past so we need to be patient and we need to trust the scouting department and the transfer department at Liverpool to make the right decisions and to bring in the right players and there was a reason why Harry Wilson didn't play against Mainz uh, the 24 year old was at the ground to watch the game but Liverpool decided it would be too much of a risk to include him in the game as he closes in on a move away from Anfield basically we didn't want him to get a long-term big injury because then his transfer would collapse to another club Fulham is his destination Neil Jones is reporting we talked between the two clubs having progressed this week personal terms it is understood have already been discussed with the player and Marco Silva the new Fulham manager is a big fan of Harry Wilson so Liverpool already got 17 million for selling Avonii and Gruich we could get another 12 million for selling Harry Wilson so that would add up to 29 million for selling just three players so that's what I'm talking about that uh, if Liverpool sell enough players we will have the transfer money the transfer funds to go into the transfer market and buy a very very good midfielder and a very good attacker and it looks like uh, Liverpool won't risk Van Dijk and Gomez in this preseason we will ease them in and uh, it looks like in the first few games of the Premier League season Liverpool will start with a starting centre-back pairing of Konate and Joan Matip and there is no really no need to risk Van Dijk and uh, Joe Gomez uh, just give them all the time in the world because you don't want them to get re-injured and they need to get ready for the season James Pierce is reporting that Jurgen Klopp said Van Dijk and Gomez won't be ready to feature in the next friendly against Hertha Berlin uh, in one week's time they are still building up their fitness in training he said I will not ris risk it and uh, the most important thing is that uh, Konate and Matip should be fit and the first 
for the first few weeks until the first international break in September, Liverpool will only game, play one game every week, so that will give more than enough rest for Konate and Matip to rest for a week and play the next game, so hopefully no injuries will occur. But we still have an uh, insurance policy, Ben Davis, Nat Phillips, Rhys Williams, even if we sell one of those three players, we will still have decent backup centre-backs. So that's it for today's video, I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, see you later guys, goodbye!